Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rohit Katawkar. I'm a microendodontist from Mumbai and I'm sharing an interesting case of instrument retrieval which I treated recently. Uh, this was the preoperative situation that the patient came with. He was referred to me for retrieving this broken instrument which was treated by another dentist. Uh, unfortunately, he also tried to retrieve the instrument without any magnification and it led to a small perforation internally and in the root. Uh, of course, we didn't start the case immediately after explaining to the patient. Uh, he understood the problems that had to be treated and we did a pre-endodontic buildup and then located that fragment. Uh, since the fragment was visible, the head was visible, I did not have to do much work to expose the head but I did have to loosen it up because the length of the fragment was significant. So we used uh, ultrasonics uh, and used them around the instrument to try and loosen the head of the instrument. Unfortunately, due to the long head, uh, long length of the head, even though the uh, head was exposed, I couldn't get the instrument to pop out. So I used a DG16 Explorer to check if the instrument was loose. And as you can see, the head of the instrument is moving, but the rest of the instrument, the tip of the file was firmly bound inside. So we used uh, liquid EDTA and irrigated the canal and activated again with ultrasonics to try and loosen out some debris. Once that was done, uh, we decided to use a retrieval tool uh, for retrieving the rest, the entire fragment in total. Since the head of the fragment was exposed, I decided to use the BTR pen. It's a loop based retrieval tool which makes use of a retrieval needle uh, which forms a small loop around the head of the instrument. So right now I'm cutting the small rubber which protects the loop on the retrieval needle. Once that is done, our loop is ready to be encircled around the head of the instrument. You can see the loop being encircled around the head. Once it is firmly secured inside, we tighten the screw on the BTR pen and we give a firm tug uh, in all directions and as you can see, already we can see the movement on the head of the instrument. The instrument immediately pops out. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the grip on the instrument because it was so long and the loop of the BTR loop, the BTR pen was slightly smaller in diameter, but we were, we managed to retrieve the instrument in total in one piece, and that's where we can see the entire fragment from the tip till the head of the instrument is visible. Once that was done, uh, we just measured it for our records, and it was about eight millimeters fragment. So that's the reason why the instrument did not pop out easily. Uh, once that was done, we could manage to get a glide path very easily. And we rapidly shaped the canals using uh, wave one gold. That's a single file reciprocating handpiece. And <clears throat> a single file was used to complete the entire canal preparation, all three canals. We checked the placement of our master cone and sealed the canals using a bioceramic sealer. So I'm using a single syringe based bioceramic sealer with my wave one gold conformed to fit cones which are placed inside and seared off at the level of the orifice. Now there was one job that's accomplished of retrieving the instrument and doing the obturation but we also had one more work to do that is to seal the perforation that was created by the previous dentist in the attempt to retrieve the instrument. So once we filled the mesial canals, one of the canals where the instrument separated uh, had separated, we did a down pack which was just above the level of the perforation. The other canal was filled till the orifice level. That was followed by obturating the distal canal. So here we used a slightly modified technique. We did a single cone placement. Since the canal was slightly wide oval, we decided to do lateral compaction and also added some additional accessory cones to fill up that rest of the space. That was done followed by searing of the gutta percha at the orifice level. So that completed our obturation. 
Once that was done, we cleaned up the excess sealer, excess cement was cleaned and removed so that we could get a good clean view for the next step of our procedure. So on the radiograph, you can see that one of the canals we have only downpacked till the middle third and the remaining space we had planned to seal the perforation. So we plan to use MTA to seal this perforation and we used an MTA carrier to pick up small increments of MTA and place them inside the canal in the area between the junction of the coronal and middle third and the orifice level. These increments were placed one by one so roughly about four to five increments were placed and we compacted them using a plugger. <clears throat> Once that was done we used a paper point to blot out the excess moisture and any small particles of MTA that was present in the pulp chamber were removed by using a micro brush. So the micro brush helped us clean everything that was followed by placing a small piece of wet cotton pellet and a temporary cement. So that's how we sent the patient back after retrieving the instrument, doing the obturation and sealing the perforation all in one appointment. Once that was done, the MTA was set. In the next visit, patient was recalled after 24 hours and we completed the post endurontic restoration. This was the final radiograph and you can see the obturation in both the canals and the MTA that has been used to seal the perforation. I hope this video was informative and uh, showcased a different type of clinical scenario which was managed very easily with the help of magnification and ultrasonics. Thank you very much and hope you have a great day ahead.